Stick in the mud. The manager was as good as his word. Scullery continued. I came home for the works with six wheels and a cab. A cab is the latest thing for engines, he told me. I hope it will cheer you up after your disappointment. Bernays chuckled. It cheered him too much. And those silly coaches made him worse. Such a handsome engine, they tittered. Six wheels and a cab. So distinguished. My dears, it's a pleasure to see him. He soon got too big for his wheels. Scott Lowry smiled ruefully. I did too, he said. Go on, Renéas. He boasted about his cab till I was tired, said Renéas. You should get someone like me and be up to date, he would say. No, thank you. You look like a snail with that house on your back. You don't go that fast either. Slow, am I? Let me tell you who was late three times last week. Oh, it's no use talking. You're just an old stick in the mud. He called me more names, and we quarreled. We ended up back to back, not speaking. It went on for days and days. One dark morning, Scarlowe had to take the workman's train to the quarry. It had rained for three days. You always pick on me for wet days, he complained. You said, Mister Bobby, have got a cab to keep us dry. Come on, Scarlowe slipped and snorted on the damp rails. He began to wonder if cabs were worth it. An hour later, I was warming up when Scarlowe's guard came coasting down. An empty truck. He stopped by our shed. There's a landslide beyond the tunnel, he said. Scarlowe's ran into it. He's stuck. Show a wheel, Reneas. Look lively. I'm sorry, Mister Peter, sir, but that Scarlowe's too swanky. He says I'm a stick in the mud. He can jolly well stick in the mud himself. It serves him right, but went on my driver. There's poor Mister Bobby and the quarrymen. Does that serve them right too? The guard says the mud's like treacle. Oh dear, I said. That will never do. We must save them before they get stuck in. And off we puffed with two trucks and some workmen. Things weren't too bad after all. The men had proudly cleaned up the line, and had lowered Scarlowe back. He was hissing and grumbling dreadfully, but we didn't listen to him. We cleaned up the rest of the line, and I pushed Scarlowe out of the way before taking the workmen to work. Mister Bobby cleaned and oiled his wheels and motion, so that when I returned with the coaches. I could help him back to the shed. I'm sorry I was so swanky," he said, "lass. Thank you for helping me. Not at all," I said, but I was still cross. Then Scarlowe began to laugh. <laughs> "I'm a stick in the mud after all," he gurgled helplessly. "I'm not you." I laughed too. I couldn't help it. He looked so funny. We were laughing when the cleaners came. We were still laughing when they left. Poor engines, they said, trapping their foreheads. But we weren't mad. We'd learned since, and we've been firm friends ever since. It was nearly dark. The listeners stirred and stretched. Thank you, Scarlowe and Renéas, they said. Now you've told us about the old days. We can give you both a splendid birthday next week.